Hello, and welcome to Chapter 9, Section 4, which is on changes in dimensions. You can find this on textbook page 697 through textbook page 700. The things that you're going to need today are going to be your regular writing pencil with an eraser. This is how you're going to work out all of the on-your-own problems, just in case when you play the video you need to make any corrections. You'll also need your colored pencils to underline, circle, and draw attention to any of the details within the problems. The math textbook, which you'll see on your right-hand side there, I've included a picture of your brain because you want to be thinking as you're watching the videos and working through the examples. And of course, your listening ears. Make sure that you do not have any distractions, that you're in a nice, well-lit, quiet space. First page we're looking at here is on textbook page 697. And at the top, you'll see the what do you learn or what you'll learn part. It says the effect dimensions have on perimeter and the effect that dimensions have on area. So those are the two things that we're going to look at today. On the right hand side here, you'll see that I've included a little picture. So you want to draw that same picture the best that you can. And you want to note that the red line on the outside of the perimeter, which is this example right here, um, is going to represent like what a fence would represent. And then the space that's inside where the grass would be, that is what the area represents. So you just think perimeter is the distance around and area is the grass inside or the space inside the polygon. So you want to add that note here. All right, so what I would like you to do first on this page, um, under the real world length, length link, <laughs> the first thing I need you to do on number four is go ahead and cross out the word width and write the word length. So in order for this example to work correctly, I did have to go ahead and change that. So I want to make sure that you fix that now first. And then the first thing you're going to look at is it says the floor of the doghouse is four feet long and two feet wide. So you're going to underline four feet long and two feet wide. It says draw the floor of the doghouse on the graph paper below. So you're going to want to draw the doghouse. So four for the length and two for the width. I've also started to label um, each side with the length. So we've got four here, four, four, I'm sorry, four and four, two and two. Then we're going to write original doghouse and put a circle around it. And we're gonna use the formula for the perimeter, which is P equals two times the length plus two times the width. So the reason we do that is because you have two side lengths that are the same and two side lengths that, that are the same. So then you're just gonna plug in the information. So you have two side lengths that are four um, feet long and two side lengths that are two feet long. So now you get P equals eight plus four. So P equals 12 feet. So on the second line here where it says add the lengths of the side to find the perimeter, you're gonna put P equals 12 feet. Number three says to multiply the length and the width to find the area. So we've written the formula area or A equals L times W. Then we're just gonna plug in that information, the length and the width, which is four and two, and then we're gonna solve, so we get eight feet squared. So for number three, we're gonna put area equals eight feet squared. Then it says Mr. Blackwell doubles the length of the doghouse. Draw the floor below. So now we're going to keep the width the same, so the width will stay at two, but the length will now change from four to eight. So we're gonna go ahead and draw our new doghouse, which I've done here to the left in blue, and then we're gonna write the word new doghouse on the right. We're gonna recalculate the perimeter, and we see that it's P equals two times eight plus P, I'm sorry, plus two times two. So we get P equals 16 plus four, and all of that's all worked out here for you now, but P equals 16 plus four, sorry about that. We got that from the eight times two. Then P equals 20 feet squared. So over here we can see now the perimeter, notice the two white arrows, the perimeter went from 12 feet to 20 feet. And actually that should not say squared. Let me go ahead and erase that. That's just supposed to be feet. <laughs> so make sure that you just have 12 feet to 20 feet. And then that the area went from eight feet squared to 16 feet squared. And again, we just used that same formula, but now we're putting in um, eight instead of four. And then for the how did the perimeter area, perimeter and area of the floors change from the first to the second doghouse, you want to write the response, the perimeter of the second house is eight feet greater. The area of the second house is twice the area of the first. Now you're going to be looking at textbook page 698. So go ahead and turn the page to textbook 698. And then you're going to see two triangles here. And the first triangle, it says, first, it says changing dimensions affect on the perimeter. So when they say changing dimensions, what they mean is when we change the side length. So we're going to find out what the effect is on the overall perimeter when we change the side length. 
So the words are, if the dimensions of the polygon are multiplied by x, then the perimeter of the polygon changes by a factor of x. So this is going to be a very important piece right here, these words, because the words are the rule. So this is the rule right here. So you want to make sure that you take note that this is where the rule can be seen. Now, we notice um, I've drawn arrows here from the 3 to the 6, from the 3 to the right-hand side 6, and from the 2 to the 4, because those are the corresponding sides, meaning if you're looking at the true triangles and they're both you know, straight up and down like they are here, then you want to match up the side lengths. You can tell that the relationship is that each one of the side lengths has been multiplied by 2. So, using the words up here, what that means is, is that if all of the side lengths are multiplied by 2, then the final perimeter is also multiplied by 2. So, you can see that the perimeter for the first triangle is 8. 3 plus 3 plus 2 gives you 8. And the perimeter for the second triangle, 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 4 is 16. So now we're going to go ahead and write original and new because this is how we're going to compare and justify. So for the um, next one, let's go back one step for me here. Okay, sorry about that. So for the original um, perimeter, we're going to have P equals 2 times the length. Sorry about that. We're going to have P equals 3 plus 3 plus 2 because those are the side lengths. So then we're going to have P equals... 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 2 is 8, so it's going to be 8. And then for the new one, it will be, okay, so for this one, we can see that when the dimensions are multiplied by 2, which is what I've written right here, then the perimeter is multiplied by 2. All right, so now we're going to look at example 1. It says, suppose the side lengths of the parallelogram at the right are tripled. So notice I put a red box around the world, word tripled. What effect would this have on the perimeter? So based on the rule that we just looked at, we would think in our mind that that would mean that the overall perimeter should also be tripled. But let's go ahead, because we have to be able to justify our response, let's go ahead and do the math. So just like before, I'm going to set up an original side and a new side. And then we're going to go ahead and do that now. So we get perimeter is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. And that's because this is a figure that has two sides of the same and two sides of the same. Remember that for perimeter of figures that have different length sides, you just add them all together. So we're going to do that for the original and the new. So for the original now, we are going to have the side lengths of right here. So we have side lengths of 3, 4, and then we do that twice. So we put the 4 in and the 3, and we get 8 plus 6, which gives us 14 inches. Now we're going to go ahead and do the perimeter of the new one, which is going to be the 9 and the 12. And so we put, you can see we put 12 and 9 in here, and we get 24 plus 18 is going to give us 42 inches. And so now we need to justify it. So up until this point, the original and the new perimeter, this is all stuff that you've already done. So now is the harder part. Now is where you have to justify it. So what you're going to do is multiply 14 times 3, because that was the original perimeter, and you're going to multiply it by 3 because you tripled all the side lengths. So when you multiply it by 3, you get 42 inches. And if you notice, the relationship between right here, so from here to here, is multiplied by 3. And the dimensions, when you change the dimensions, this was multiplied by 3. So the justify, which is going to be right here, it says compare 42 inches divided by 14 inches is 3. So the perimeter is 3 times the perimeter of the original figure. All right, so now we're going to look at the first example here, um, your, the on-your-own example. So you're going to want to make sure that you're doing this example, um, the on-your-own in pencil, just in case you have to change it. And before you pause the video, I wanted to make sure that you were going to set it up correctly with the original and the new. So you'll have the original dimensions, which are out to the right for this trapezoid. Now keep in mind, since this is a trapezoid, it's not going to be a 2 times length plus 2 times width. You're just going to add up the sides. So it'll just be the 14 plus... 13 plus 14 plus 24. So you'll do that, and then you'll do whatever it asks you to do as far as the multiplying. So we'll get started. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you did well. Let's go ahead and check it out. So with the original, you should have, as I said, um, multi or added 14 plus 13 plus 14 plus 24. And that's because you got those dimensions right there, and you would have gotten 65 centimeters as shown. For the new, now if you notice, just off to the side here, 
um, for the new. I just, because when you multiply by one half, it's the same as dividing by two. So what I did is I wrote the new dimensions right next to the ones that are there now, but I'm also gonna have you draw a little trapezoid down here. So you see 12, seven, six and a half, and seven. So now we're gonna add those dimensions right there at the bottom. And we get the perimeter is 32.5 centimeters. So up until that point, Everything has been the same that you've always done. There's nothing new here. But now you have to justify your answer. So it says the original perimeter was 65 centimeters and the new perimeter is 32.5 um, centimeters. And so then you have to have the 65 divided by 32.5 is equal to one half. So the perimeter is gonna be one half of the original perimeter, which is how you're justifying it, because what you did was you multiplied each of the side lengths by one half. So you have established that that, that relationship is the exact same. So now you're looking at textbook page 699. So the relationship between the changes in dimension and the effect that it has on perimeter is a pretty simple, straightforward relationship. If you multiply all the sides by three, then the perimeter gets multiplied by three as well. If you divide all the sides by six, then the perimeter is divided by six. So again, in your mind, you need to establish that rule now because that was the whole purpose of that first page of instruction is understanding the rule that there's a direct connection between changing this, the dimensions or each side length and as long as you change each side length by, by the same amount. So again, multiplying them all by six or five or three, then the perimeter is also going to be multiplied by six or five or three. So now we're gonna look though to see what those changes in dimensions, the effect that they have on the area. So for this first problem here, you are going to see the changes um, in the polygon here, which is a rectangle. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. Okay, and up here at the top where it has the rule, it says if the dimensions of the polygon are multiplied by x, then the area of the polygon changes by x times x or x squared. So that rule is gonna be a little bit different and a little bit more tricky than what you're used to. So let's go ahead and dive into that deeper. So now you should be looking at textbook page 699. On 699, you see at the top it says changes in our changing dimension effect on the area. So on the left, I'm going to write figure A, and on the right, I will write figure B. And I would like for you to do the same on your paper. I've also written the formula here for area of a rectangle. It's going to be length times width, and I've identified that the length of figure A is going to be 5, and the width is 4. And figure B, the length is now 10, and the width is 2. So up until this point, you should be able to follow along and get the area for both figure A and figure B. That's nothing new. That's a skill that you already have. So now you should be onto the portion where you're justifying it. This is going to be the harder part. So the first thing you need to do, you see here in white, it says the dimensions were multiplied by 2. So now what you're going to do, um, then you need to ask yourself, when the 2 is squared, we get 4. And then the last piece the figure A's area is 20 units, as you see on the left, times the 4 that we got when we squared the 2. And figure B's area is then 80. So the whole idea is that you take whatever the number is that you multiplied the dimensions between the two figures by, multiplied or divided by, um, and then you square that number. So here we got 4, which isn't my favorite because 2 times 2 is 4 and 2 squared is 4, but you square it. It's not multiplied by 2. And then whatever that number is, you either multiply or divide by to get the new area. Let's go ahead and look at the first problem, or the second example rather here. The side length of the triangle at the right are multiplied by five. What effect would this have on the area? Justify your answer. Okay, so as you can see, I went ahead and pulled out the base for the original triangle, which is in the top right corner. That's gonna be two centimeters and the height is one centimeter. For the new triangle, the base is going to be 10 centimeters and the height is going to be 5 centimeters. So um, I've put those dimensions up at the top and then you want to plug them into each of the formulas and find the area. So we went ahead and plugged in 2 times 1 divided by 2, we get 2 over 2 and then that um, comes out to be 1 centimeter squared. On the right here with the new triangle, we're going to show the area equals the 10 times 5 divided by 2. So we get area equals 50 divided by 2. And the last piece is area equals 25 centimeters squared because it's area. So now comes the hard part. This is, again, what you've already done in the past. So now you have to justify your response. So the first thing that you're going to want to ask yourself is, how did we get from the original to the new? And what they asked you to do was to multiply by 5. 
So because you multiplied by five, you're gonna go ahead and take that five and square it. So five squared gives you 25. And now to justify it, you have to look at the original area, which is right here, so one. Then you have to say multiply by 25 because we got that from right there should equal the new area, which was 25 centimeters squared. So one times 25 is in fact 25, and so that's your justification. All right, now you see the on your own example, B. It says a rectangle measures two feet by four feet. Suppose the side lengths are multiplied by 2.5. What effect would this have on the area? Justify your answer. So the first thing that you wanna do is start with the original on one side and the new on the other side. So go ahead and pause the video now and try this on your own. All right, let's go ahead and look and see what you got. For the length of the original figure, it was two feet by four feet. So we're gonna fill that in. And the length of the new figure would then be multiplied by 2.5. So you can see that I did the math there. We get five. And for the width, it's gonna be 2.5 times four, and we get 10. Make sure to move your decimal out and then back in for your final answer. So now the original length is two and the new length is five, and the original width is four and the new width is 10. So now what you're going to want to do, I erased the work so that I would have room, um, but I would like you to keep the work there. So now we're gonna plug the two times four in on the left and we get eight feet squared. And we're gonna plug the five times 10 in on the right and we get 50 feet squared. So now, again, you ask yourself what happened between the first figure and the second figure? What happened to the dimensions? And as you can see here, I, I wrote that they were multiplied by 2.5. Then the second question that you need to ask is what is 2.5 squared? So you're gonna to wanna to do the math off to the side like I have here, and you should get 6.25. So now you wanna take that 6.25, and your justification is when you take the original area, which was eight, and you multiply it by the 6.25, which you just found out when you squared 2.5, you should get 50. So as you can see, I've erased that line there so that I can make room for the work. 6.25 times eight. Remember to move your decimals out and back in, and you do get 50. So my justification is right down here. The original area is eight times 6.25, which was 2.5 squared equals 50. So that's the last piece of the problem. And so you wanna make sure that you have all three pieces, the first area, the second area, and then the justification. Now you should be looking at textbook page 700, the last example, example three. For example three, you have sine A, you wanna go ahead and write that on the right side, and or I'm sorry, the left side, and then sine B on the right side. This problem is a little bit different because they give you the area already, and they also give you the relationship between eight inches and 12 inches, but that's all they give you. So you know the area for sine A is 309 inches squared, and the sine B you don't know, so that's what you're actually solving for. So now you need to ask yourself, what, the re what is the relationship between the eight that I just circled there and the 12? Because that's the only piece of information that you have to go on. So you find out that when you multiply eight times 1.5, you get 12. So then you have to ask yourself, what's 1.5 squared? And I did that work out to the side here. And you get 2.25. So then the last piece is, if I multiply the 309 inches squared that they gave me for sine A, I should be able to now multiply that by the 2.25 and get the new area. So as you can see, I've started the justification and now we just need to do the multiplication. So I erased my work there so that I had room for the new piece. Set that problem up, make sure to move your decimal out and then back in. And you should get 695.25 inches squared. And we got that from multiplying the 309, which is the area that they gave us for sine A, by the um, 2.25. Now keep in mind, they could have also given us the area for sine B, and then we would have just had to divide by the 2.25. So you would be working backwards instead of forwards. Okay, on this page, textbook page 700, go ahead and do numbers one through four. Be sure to justify your answer. And I know this lesson was actually taught in class as well. So you also have um, the next page, the independent practice to do as well. I will see you in class.